All right, you guys are looking at me right away. You're like, thank God, paramedics. Some of you are like, oh, holy shit, he thought he was, or you thought I was your probation officer, right? It's messed up, man, because I don't look cool now. I don't, I know I don't look cool, okay? I used to be cool back in the day, back in my 20s. Who's in their 20s? I guess it's Oxycontin night. What's going on? Check this out, though. Anybody in their 40s or over in here make some noise? So that's how you do it, 20 year olds. You hear those guys? They fucking hate you. <laughs> nah, cause you guys can go out and party all night long, get up the next day and feel fine. It's not like that when you get older. I'm in my 50s, I take a shot of NyQuil and three days later I'm coming out of a coma. <laughs> but I was wild back in the days, man. I used to party and I'm a dad now. I can't have my kids knowing that. I don't need my kids finding out what I used to do. I remember the first time it slipped out though. I'm helping my youngest daughter do her homework. The older one's helping me cook in the kitchen, so I'm not really paying attention to the young one. She's converting fractions. She has no idea what she's doing. She goes, Dad, I don't get this. I said, what's the question? She goes, what's an eighth convert to? And without even thinking about it, I'm like three and a half grams. <laughs> I hear this, what? And I'm like, I don't know, 50 bucks. 120 if it's white. That's when I hear this, what are you talking about? I look up and I see the look on her face. I'm like, I fucked up. <laughs> so I start backpedaling, cause I gotta get out of this cause I don't wanna get in trouble from their mother, right? So I'm like, oh, honey, isn't this a word problem? She goes, no, it's sixth grade math. I'm like, well, there's the problem. I'm teaching you math you're not gonna use till high school and college. <laughs> Now my high school student's like, oh my God, Dad, did you smoke marijuana in high school? Cat's out of the bag now, so I'm like, yeah, every day. <laughs> so pretty much college too. She's like, seriously, when was the last time you smoked marijuana? And I'm like, well, let's see, college is back in the 80s, so about a half hour ago. <laughs> right before your mother dropped you off. <laughs> Haven't you noticed how mellow daddy's been since the divorce? <laughs> Now here's the thing, that is a true story and I found out there's three kinds of people that'll laugh at that story and there's a fourth person who didn't laugh at any of that at all. That's because the fourth person didn't get any of the drug references or anything like that. And if you're that fourth person in high school, you probably played in the marching band. <laughs> but if you laughed hardest at the three and a half grams, let's face it, you've sold drugs. <laughs> all right, see me after the show, buddy. <laughs> all right. If you laughed at the 50 bucks, you bought pot, no big deal, that's nothing. But, here's the big thing, if you laughed at the 120 for white, if I do three more jokes about cocaine, you're gonna have to get up and take a shit. <laughs> Two more and you're pooping, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> and here's the thing, I took that drug knowledge and I actually did something good with it, I became a paramedic. Okay, and here's a, and no, no, it's a good thing, man, because you wanted somebody like me on the call. You want somebody who's been there. You don't want some guy that just read about it in a book and probably played in the marching band. <laughs> I had a guy one time that was on acid, and he goes like this. He's like, hey, man, I want to go to the hospital. I'm like, dude, there's nothing we can do for you. He goes, I still want to go. And I'm like, brother, you just need to ride this one out. <laughs> and if you're laughing right now, you've taken acid. <laughs> The bearded guy in the back, I figured he'd be laughing a lot harder. <laughs> so I take the guy to the hospital, I tell the nurse what's wrong with him. She goes, what do you want me to do for him? I said, put him in a dimly lit room and play the Grateful Dead. <laughs> She's like, what? And the guy's like, hey, that sounds pretty good, man. And even the cops appreciated that I had this drug knowledge, okay? We're on a drug bus one time, right? We're on this drug bus and the guy tried to ingest the drug so he wouldn't get busted, but they still found a bindle on him. And they found this bindle and they're talking out by the squad car. I'm in the back of the ambulance with the guy and I hear this, he says it's an eight, or he says it's an eight ball. What's an eight ball? And I'm like, three and a half grams. <laughs> the cops are like, thanks Dave. In the meantime, my partner's like, dude, what are you doing? You're gonna get in trouble. I'm like, what are they gonna do? Arrest me for knowing measurements? <laughs> and just so you know, there's 2.2 pounds in a kilo, 454 grams in a real pound, 448 in a dealer's pound, 112 and a quarter pound, 28 ounce, 14 and a half, seven and a quarter, three and a half and an eighth. <laughs> Thank you, and I firmly believe that if it hadn't been for drugs in the United States, none of us would know the metric system. 
because there isn't anybody in here that can tell me how many kilometers it is to the dispensary, but every one of you knows how much it's supposed to weigh when you get there, all right? <laughs> you guys, I'm Dave Pursue. Thank you very much. Let's bring back George. So many pretty girls are